Hello, welcome to the self learning platform by Dr. Shishma Singh. Today we start Unit 3 Nature and Forms of Conflict Intrastate, Interstate, and Global. And we start with topic Civil Society in Conflict, Containment, and Resolution. The assertion of different segments of the society representing diverse public interests is the phenomena we have identified as a major development in recent decades. This is what has come up to be called the emergence of civil society as distinct from the state as david e after points out civil society refers to those networks of society such as voluntary organization non-government organizations private educational and religious facilities etc how it intervenes and the way its power is delimited defines the type of character of the state, democratic, authoritarian, etc. To the degree to which government intervenes in civil society, we speak of the strong state, that is, one where government accepts a high level of responsibilities for the welfare of its citizens, where the responsibilities are fulfilled by bodies outside the state. We speak of the strong civil society. There is, however, no clear or even necessary correspondence between the government intervention and the social benefit. Joan Keane, a renowned authority on civil society, gives even a broader definition of civil society when he says that it properly refers to the dynamic non-governmental system of interconnected socio-economic institutions that straddle the whole earth. These networks supplement and complement the role of the state. Sometimes they would even have a conflicting role vis-a-vis -vis the state. Some of them perform welfare activities as complementary to the state's policies. Some others enter fields of activity not covered by governmental agencies. There are yet others, particularly those NGOs which seek to promote human rights whose objects and activities may constantly challenge the policies of the political state. Now the next point is the contextuality of civil society. The evolution of civil society in its relationship with the state has undergone major transformations in the modern period itself. Until the middle of the 18th century, the phrase civil society was contemporaneous with the world state. Thus, different European language terms like societas, civilis, society, civil, burgili, chili, Jessel craft were interchangeable terms with the state. In this phase, the ancient Roman 
identification of societal civil with the state provided a continuity. This concept of civil society began to implode after the middle of the 18th century when civil society and the state were seen as different entities. Civil society was identified more with the sphere of economic social relations and the state with the political sphere. It should be remembered that this was the period when the economic capitalism emphasizing free trade philosophy came into prominence and the state was expected to keep away from this sphere. This phase extended for over a century. Then by about the middle of the 19th century, the anti-static orientation of the distinction between civil society and the state was weakened. The reinstatement of the state's preeminence can be witnessed in the popularization of the legal concept of sovereignty as an attribute solely belonging to the state, conferring it with the power to control all other parts of the social sphere. The state therefore becomes the supreme institution in and of the society. In one sense, this phase has its hold right up to the contemporary times. For instance, the welfare state concept and the authoritarian concept of state power endow the state with overarching power and influence over society. However, it is not and though the civil society did not react to a rear guard action against the state concept. What in political theory is called pluralism, for example, formulated that the state is just one among other social institutions, though at best it may be regarded as the first among equals. The late 19th and the 20th century saw state power and pluralism in constant contest for theoretical and practical dominance. The contest on the whole went in favor of state. In the last decade of the 20th century, however, civil society projected itself with a new sphere sharpness. Next point is contemporary civil society theory and practice. The immediate occasion for the projection of civil society in the contemporary decades could be traced to the recession of the state from some of its earlier functions. To a great extent, this is a trend accompanying the globalization process. It is well known that globalization promotes the expansion of private sector and puts pressure on the political state to withdraw from the economic aspect of society. This trend in its turn left large group of people vulnerable to socio-economic distress. It is to cater to these interests that NGOs have emerged in a big way. But apart from globalization, another important cause for civil society's rise to prominence is the success of its challenge against the communist totalitarian states in the Eastern European countries. 
there the communist states so completely dominated society that it gave rise to the joke that under communism instead of state withering away it is the civil society that was made to wither with a vengeous trade unions banned by the states groups of intellectual persecuted by the comments rose against the communist system with courage and perseverance and the ultimately succeeded in dismantling the system poland czechoslovakia hungary inaugurated this era the soviet union the dominant power in the system itself slowly opened up primarily due to the policies of perestroika or reconstructing and glasnost or openness pursued by mikhail gorbachev these illusion the strangle hold of the communist system over eastern europe thus the liberation of eastern europe by late 20th century is regarded as the triumph of the civil society over the state it should be understood that the recent resurgence of the civil society is not only due to the overreaching total terrorism of communist states popular reactions to the regimes of the right oriented authoritarian dictatorships are as much responsible to this trend in latin america in particular the frequent presence of military dictatorships produced strong resentment among diverse segments of those societies resulting in the formation of human rights groups many led by church leaders and other organizations as a manifestation of the civil society dimensions these are the overarching responses of civil society in challenging the state in liberal democracies civil society plays even a more sustained role though it does not have the same anti state projection as it did in former communist europe or authoritarian latin american brazil an important study says that the civil society became the refuse of liberal theory and that the civil society perspective constitutes the basic consensus of enlightened democracies the significance of civil society in contemporary political and social theory has become so pervasive that in the sub discipline of comparative politics within political science studies it becomes a major topic it viewed as a major institutional device in participatory democracy so much so civil society and allied social movements are theorized as politicizing some of the activity of the state from a position outside the state institutions it is also regarded as an answer to state activity becoming largely technicalized beyond the comprehension of the average citizen next point is civil society and conflict resolution 
From the above discussion of civil society, it could be inferred how civil society institutions perform a significant role in conflict prevention, containment and resolution. It is worthwhile to refer to this point at some length. Ordinarily, it is the state that has near monopoly in ultimately prescribing and implementing conflict resolution. But because the causes of conflict keep on increasing and the state even otherwise cannot always effectively function in this regard, civil society institutions entered the scene in a big way. In particular, the very spread of the idea of participatory democracy introduces, among other things, two important claims for participation of the people. The first is for the claim for more equitable sharing of society's resources and for access to the enabling rights and privileges that present day states are obliged to concede to people. The second claim refers to the very demand for participation in society's governance. Both of these points can be well illustrated from the human rights claims in society and the wide popularization of democratic decentralization. The result is an open invitation for increased role for non-governmental institutions. They play a role in making these people aware of their entitlement to these claims. The effect of this is an even more extensive role in conflict avoidance, containment, and even in conflict resolution. Public health and educational entitlement are good examples in this regard. The preservation of environmental balance is another instance. These entitlements as is by now well known, sometimes bring the people and government in conflict. Yet, in the final analysis, the intervention of voluntary non-government agencies also brings about an adjustment of claims and counterclaims. A few examples with illustrate this trend. The NGO's role in the promotion of minority rights, invoking the rights guaranteed by the Indian Constitution and the UN Declaration of Human Rights, and by bringing pressure upon the government to implement these go a long way in containing long-term potential for conflict and above all. In achieving just ends for society's peace. Similarly, in issues relating to displacement of thousands of people, when large irrigation and other developmental projects bring large scale disturbance to their natural habitat, the NGOs concerned perform the whistle blowing function and much more in helping avoid damage to larger public interest. Another important aspect of civil society's intervention in conflict resolution is that it is also a countervailing power to the play of market forces in society. It has been noted how economic liberalization and globalization make the state less silent in the social process and project the market given this trend. 
NGOs and allied institutions are now concerned as much with protecting larger social purposes from the free play of the market as from the policies of the state. Having said all this, civil society theory is riddled with doubts about its democratic possibilities along with its potentialities for generating conflict also. However, the present purpose of our discussion is to spotlight the nature and extent of its role in attending to social interest as a parallel organ to the state as also realize that both civil society and the state converge at points as also diverge into one opposite direction. Yet both claim to be resolver of intra-societal conflict. Let us now examine interstate conflict whose extreme manifestations is war in our next lecture. Here we want to wind up this lecture. Thank you so much for your attention.